bend this bill to the House. The question is that the motion be agreed. Mr. Mr. Speaker, Mr. 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 Speaker, there we go. That, that's as much as the National Government um, really are committed to this. Right. Sort of a half-baked speech from a minister who couldn't even get the beginning of it right. Um, no, <laughs> don't be harsh, says Jackie D. Paid the big bucks, paid the big bucks to just get out the, the motion and they couldn't quite do it. Mr, Mr. Speaker, um, the package that the government has put up in terms of helping low and middle income people, you can divide it into seven. One seventh of it is the accommodation supplement changes. Now, they are alluded to at the start of this bill in the explanatory note. What that is, is a necessary payment to people struggling under housing stress, struggling in a housing crisis. It's actually an admission of failure by the government, because what it means is that the housing crisis has got so out of control that they've had to come in with an emergency payment, a classic ambulance at the bottom of the cliff approach from this government. And so they've come in and it's needed and it's necessary. Let's make sure we get on record though that the accommodation supplement, Mr Speaker, is a deeply flawed instrument. Right. It is effectively a subsidy to landlords and when uh, Labor leads the next government, we will be reviewing that and trying to make sure we get a much fairer system. But right now today, that one seventh of the government's package is necessary and we could support Support that. There's another seventh of it that's about working for families changes. And I think everybody in this House recognises that if you want to get money to working families directly and make sure that working families are the people who benefit the most from a package, that's how you do it. Because that's the system. That's it's a right. tax credit system right. and you can target it. So in the package, the government's package, one seventh of it, $373 million next year, is for working for families. Right. And while, Mr Speaker, on this side of the House, we do not support the changes to the abatement rates, which squeeze working for families in a little bit more, we do support the idea of simplification and we do support the idea of increasing uh, some part of, of working for families payments. So that's two sevenths. The other five sevenths... $1.9 billion next year is in tax cuts. And these are tax cuts, Mr Speaker, that aren't about inflation adjustment, they aren't about so-called bracket creep, they're a straight-out election year bribe. $1.9 billion. Unfocused, irresponsible tax cuts. Unfocused, Mr Speaker, because if they really were about supporting working people and low-income people, then would we really have 800,000 New Zealanders earning less than $14,000 a year getting nothing? Would we really see a package where people who are single people earning up towards $48,000 a year get $1, $1 of benefit? Would that really be a package that was targeted and well-focused? It's not, Mr Speaker. It's all about Stephen Joyce and his role as campaign manager for the National Party, not as finance minister for the National Party. And so Stephen Joyce has come forward with this tax cut package designed totally for September the 23rd, not to actually support working families. But, Mr Speaker, this is also irresponsible, this tax package, because there are people who pay for tax cuts like this. They are the parents who are sending their, student, their, their, their um, children to early childhood centres, and then early childhood centres are coming back and saying, we'd really like to have fully qualified staff in the centre, That's we'd right. really like to provide all the services that we can, but our funding's been frozen by the government for years. And so they're paying for this tax cut because the national government haven't put in funding for that. This morning, we've heard from GPs that as a result, of a very tiny $9 million versus $1.9 billion tax cut, $9 million increase for primary health care in this budget, they're going to have to put fees up. That'll eliminate the tax cut benefit that's legislated for here for many New Zealanders. Right. There is a cost to making tax cut changes. Tax cuts are spending. It's spending by any other name. Well, on this side of the House, we are absolutely clear, Mr Speaker, there are better priorities. There are more important things for New Zealand and New Zealanders than these tax cuts here. Because they're so unfocused and they're so, un, uh, so poorly targeted. 
And so, Mr. Speaker, what we believe on this side of the House is that that $1.9 billion could go to making sure New Zealanders, first home buyers, young New Zealanders, get into the housing market. Because there was nothing much about housing in the budget, nothing to replicate Labor's Kiwi Build plan of actually building tens of thousands of affordable homes for first home buyers to buy. That's not here in this budget because the National Party have prioritised these tax cuts. They've got the wrong priorities, Mr Speaker. Right. And that is never more clear, Mr Speaker, when we look at another winter with more and more homeless New Zealanders. Right. Another winter where New Zealanders will look on in shame at the fact that there are families living in cars and garages that there are young children trying to do their homework by torchlight in the back of a van. There's nothing in this budget for those people. I'm sorry to interrupt the honourable member. The time has come for me to leave the chair for the um, luncheon break. This debate is interrupted, and I shall resume the chair at 2 o'clock.